Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to create a hot chocolate GraphQL API in .NET Core. So as you can see here, I have a new empty solution ready for this guide. And what we are going to do first of all is right click our solution. We're going to add a new project and we're going to select an ASP.NET Core web application. I'm going to give it a project name of API since this will be our GraphQL API. I'll leave the type as empty because we will be manually adding in the GraphQL configuration ourselves. The language is C Sharp and the framework we'll be using will be at .NET 7, which is the latest at the time of recording. So with all of those details filled in, I'm going to go ahead and hit create like so. And this will create our hot chocolate GraphQL API project. What I'm going to do is just right click, get and add in order to add those files into version control. And the first thing that we are going to do now is add in the GraphQL NuGet package. So what we are going to do is right click API, manage NuGet packages, and we're going to do a search for hot chocolate like so. And as you can see here, we have all of the hot chocolate uh, NuGet packages. We're going to scroll down and select hot chocolate ASP.NET Core. What I'm going to do is install this package into our API project. And as you can see, that has successfully been installed into the project like so. Next up, what I am going to do now is hop into the program class in the startup and we are going to add in our GraphQL configuration. So at the top of this class, you'll notice we have our web application builder. And what we're going to do is we're going to say a builder.services.add GraphQL server, like so. Then you'll notice in the web application middleware, we currently have this uh, get endpoint, which returns hello world. What we're going to do is we're going to replace this with app.mapGraphQL. And that will essentially set up the GraphQL endpoint within our API. And it will also add the banana cake pop interactive editor so that when we navigate to slash GraphQL in the browser, it will open up banana cake pop, allowing us to interactively run GraphQL queries and mutations from within the browser. So the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to create a query type. Now there are two core types in GraphQL and that is the query type and the mutation type. Now queries, as the name suggests, allow you to essentially query and retrieve data and mutations allow you to edit or modify data. You can essentially think of queries as reads and mutations as writes. So what we are going to do in our API project is we're going to create a new class. We're going to call it query like so. And just before we define our query, we're going to create a couple of custom types. So what I'm going to do is create a record called a book like so. This is going to have a string of title and it's also going to have an author like so. And then what we're going to do underneath book is create our author record. And this is going to have a string property for name. Now what we'll do inside our query class, we are going to create a book query. So what I'm going to do is create a method here called a public book get book like so and then within this method I'm going to return a new book and that's going to be called C sharp in depth and then the author I'll pop in there as John Skeet. So essentially this is a very basic uh, query which will essentially return a book and that's just hard coded data for now. But of course, as you progress with GraphQL, you'll likely connect it to various data sources 
for example, you know, HTTP requests or uh, database queries. But for now, to keep things simple, we will just return a single hard-coded book from our book query. So with this query now created, we can come back into our program file and where we've got our builder.services.addGraphQL server, I am going to say add query type and our query type is simply query, like so. And that essentially tells GraphQL where to look for those queries. So now what I'm going to do, last but not least, is open up our launch settings.json file. And you'll notice here that it's set to launch the browser at true. What I'm going to do is define the launch URL as GraphQL. And that will essentially open up the browser to GraphQL into Banana Cake Pop ahead of time so that we don't need to navigate there manually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this HTTPS profile. As you can see there, it builds the solution and it opens up the browser to Banana Cake Pop. So if we create a document, you'll notice we have our schema endpoint, which is the URL of our API slash GraphQL. And then we also have the subscription endpoint and the server-side event subscription endpoint. We'll leave all of these properties just as the defaults as they are automatically populated for us. If we then hit apply, you'll notice over here on the left-hand side, we have our operations window. So what I'm going to do is create a query and you'll notice that we have our book uh, query type. You'll notice this has a field for title and a field for author. So if I specify title like so, we then also have our author type, which has our nested field for name. So you can see there we have this uh, query, which is going to get a book and it's going to return the title of the book and it's also going to return the name of the author. So what I will do now if I hit run is execute that query and you can see that we get back our C sharp in depth book by John Skeet. So essentially what we have done inside our solution is we've created a hot chocolate API project. Within the program, we have added GraphQL server to our services. We've also added in our custom defined query type. We've then mapped GraphQL to map the slash GraphQL endpoint and also integrate banana cake pop with that endpoint in the browser. And as I mentioned, we have created that custom query type with a book query. And that book query simply returns a hard-coded book, C-sharp in depth, with an author, John Skeet. So I hope you found this video useful, just creating a basic, simple GraphQL API in ASP.NET Core. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.